Today we're going to paint clovers in the negative. Hi, I'm Elisa of Elisa Laporte Art, and today's tutorial we're going to talk about negative space painting. If you're not quite sure what that is, stay tuned and find out. To start off our negative painting, we're going to go in with a wet on wet wash, and I'm just going to get my paper nice and saturated. Going into my CAD yellow light, I'm going to create a very pale yellow, and I'm going to tint my paper using this pale yellow, and it will create my lightest value. Instead of pure white, it will be this pale yellow. Negative painting is when we paint the shapes around and in between an object, focusing on the negative rather than the positive. A positive shape is something that can be touched. A negative shape is the space in between that cannot be touched. I will be using most of my greens, plus cad yellow and a little bit of Payne's Gray for this painting. I could use just one green if that's all you have, adding a little bit of blue, yellow, or red to change the temperature and hue. I really liked the feel of all these different greens, so I thought I would try them all out together and see how that would work out. So I just laid them all out here so I can reference them and see the different intensities of each of them as I go in and continue to layer my painting. Here I am going in and deciding on which of my clovers I want to keep that lighter color so that it's easier for me to see and not get confused in this whole jumble of clovers of where I want to keep my lightest lights and where I want to keep my darkest darks. Remembering that we are going into our negative space. This technique of painting is a little bit more time consuming as you must think about the negative shapes and the positive forms of your subject, but also because you need to wait for each layer to dry before you start on the next layer. So here I have waited for it to dry and I'm going in with a darker green and painting all of that negative space around those brighter flowers, which I kind of marked out already going in again with that um, very pale green. And so I just want to go around all of those flowers, keeping the ones that I want to be my lightest clover, not flower, to be the lightest light and just going in with a dark wash over the whole thing. And I just continue to layer this up, leaving out some clovers with each wash that I go in. So here I'm deciding on which ones I want to keep in that second tone. So I have that first wash, which will be my lightest colors. You can see those already starting to pop out. And then you can see where I'm deciding to keep that second light color. So I'm just kind of working my way through the value scale as I do this, darkening up all those places that I want to be in shadow and just pushing those darks a little bit more with each wash. And this is how I created my negative space painting. This way of painting might feel frustrating at first as you have to completely change the way you look at a painting, the way you think of it. You have to be thinking about the spaces in between your objects, that negative space. And it can be very difficult and sometimes you'll feel like you messed up something. It's okay if you do just step back, let it dry, and then come back to it. And it won't be as bad as you think. Um, as these layers dry, they will dry lighter than what they appear. And you can always either scrub it out or you can create darker darks around that area so it doesn't feel like it's too dark in that spot. Just remember to take your time this might take you a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and that's okay. This style of painting helps us understand not only depth, but our values. If you have trouble understanding values, I recommend checking out this video here, which I will link in the description below. And then before practicing going in and doing a full painting, 
to practice drawing with a light pencil and drawing positive shapes of a tree, flowers, leaves, and then paint only the open spaces around and in between those objects. This will help you see those shapes in between before you start on a bigger painting and maybe get too frustrated with it. Practice that a couple times and when you feel like you're starting to understand it, then you can move to doing a full painting. You don't want to get frustrated and then stop doing something because you're not understanding it. Take things slow, understand the basics of how something works. Practice, practice, practice. Uh, our brush mileage, our pencil mileage is very important to our success in a painting. Negative painting is difficult at first, but with practice, we can improve our skills. One way to do this is to train our eye to focus on the form of the object while painting the spaces in between. Next, I've chosen a green that is not only darker in value, but is higher in intensity. I want to really pick up those very minty green leaves to really make this clover pop. As I continue to build up these layers, I'm occasionally going to actually take a picture of my painting, put it in black and white, and check my values, making sure that I'm seeing that depth I'm trying to convey in this painting. I hope you continue to enjoy watching this and learning from it as I continue to build up my layers and the intensity of these clovers as I continue to move along. And I hope you enjoy the music that I've chosen to go along with this.
I'm gonna come back in here and explain what I'm doing. Now that I've finished with most of my negative painting, I'm going to go and paint in the positive now. I'm going to add a little bit more detailing to these clover leaves because you can see a lot more detail on them. They are darker in the centers and they are lighter on the outside of the leaf. So what I'm doing is I'm going in with a little bit of paint and then I'm going to rinse my brush or use another brush with just pure water and just blend that out so it lightly bleeds out and creates this beautiful effect of being darker in the center, but not completely in the center, but in the center of each leaf and then slowly getting lighter as it goes out. And I go throughout the whole painting just doing this to all of the main leaves and then going through and darkening up all of the negative space that I still feel needs to be maybe pushed a little bit darker. And I'm going to do that by going in with my Payne's Gray, just a very light wash of it. And it kind of neutralizes the green and tones it down. So it pushes that even further into the distance for us.
I hope that you had fun learning how to paint in the negative with me and that you give this painting a try. I will have a downloadable sketch on my blog and I will leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to click that bell so you can be notified when I post new videos. And I'll see you in the next one.